uh, I'm very excited to be here. I was telling the organizers, like, this is the conference I always wanted to talk at. And I'm here the last year, so I'm very excited. Thank you uh, for accepting my talk. I hope it's weird enough for you. Um, so I'm going to warn you in the next, like, 25-ish minutes, you're going to encounter some, like, very poor singing, too many cat gifts, and just an excessive amount of silliness. So get ready. Um, first, I want to, I, my bio is a little bit out of date. Um, so you can, you can see up there, uh, it says I, I live in Omaha, Nebraska. I no, I no longer live in Nebraska. I live in San Francisco as of like two weeks ago. But fun fact about Nebraska, the tourism department just released a new tagline and get it, uh, so this is what it actually is. Honestly, it's not for everybody. Like that's, that's it, like that's Nebraska's like tagline. I'm like, really? You're right, it's not for me either. <laughs> so um, as of uh, actually later this month, I am going to be working at Thought, starting at ThoughtBot in San Francisco. Very excited about that. I know there's, there's a few ThoughtBotters and former ThoughtBotters in the audience. Hi, if I haven't gotten to meet you yet, I'm excited to after this. So, um, but let's get started. I'm gonna hold this. There we go. Okay, so I've been told by a few people that one of my strengths is thinking outside the box, or as I like to call it, being really good at coming up with stupid ideas. So some of my stupid ideas have included Feces Book, a social media website for your poo. Um, there's kombucha, which for those of you who don't, who don't know, kombucha is a fermented tea drink, but this is a super boozy kombucha. Um, so birth, announce, birth announcements for features that you release at work, but I don't have a name for that one yet. I gotta think of that one. Um, there's a meowica, and so it's a US-based antisocial network for your cat. Um, and I tested it out in a smaller market in Omaha. It's called Omeowha. So, uh, slight, slight change of subject. Uh, still very relevant. Who here is familiar with Game of Thrones? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm assuming most of you because it's the most popular show in the world currently. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on why I'm talking about Game of Thrones all of a sudden. This is me, my wonderful husband. We got married in a bar to the disappointment of both of our parents. <laughs> That's not the relevant part. We have some cats. So, this is uh, Xiao Gui and Clementine and they're sweethearts. And this is Gita, she's an asshole. <laughs> and yes, that is a professional picture of my cat. Um, so I'm that, I'm that person. This is also me and my husband. Relevant because uh, we like Game of Thrones. This was a few years ago after like season one aired. So you can't even tell the difference, right? I, I can't, I don't know which one's me. Um, but uh, on, to, on to what really matters is you might be confused about what, what is it with Game of Thrones. That's okay, because I'm going to play you the Game of Thrones theme song. Um, and let's see if it, it should start playing. Not yet? Not yet? Hold on. You guys just heard the sound, right? Okay, let's try this again. Probably all recognize this, maybe. Okay, I'll stop it there. So it's an, inst it's an instrumental score, right? There are no lyrics, or are there? Well, there are if you add them yourself. So um, what, what we're gonna do, I said there would be singing. We are going to meow the Game of Thrones theme song, and I'll get us started. Um, and one second, like, so why meow? I have no idea. Like, it just started one time, like, we were watching Game of Thrones, it comes on, and we're like, oh, there's nothing to sing along to, so we start meowing. And are you guys ready? Because it's kind of addictive once you get started. So it goes, meow, 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 it's fun. So like we just we just meowified the Game of Thrones theme song. Probably set like a world record. Um, I'll submit that one to the Guinness Book. Um, 
So Meowfire is the name of my application, and it's just one idea in a long line of bad ideas I've come up with over the years. But it also kind of seemed like a really interesting coding problem to solve. And I finally said, what the hell, and I went ahead and built it. So how does it work? Well, the basics, you upload a song's audio file, and Meowfire outputs a new audio file with that song's melody sung by cats. OK, so I wish I could say there was such a thing as a cat choir. I Googled it, and uh, nothing came up. So all up to me to figure out. But uh, in my internet research, I came across one of my favorite musical uh, cat, uh, cats of all time. Oh, oh no, does he not play now? Sorry. So imagine, there we go. Rest in peace, keyboard cat. I know, he's gone. Cats don't live that long, you know? <laughs> that video's from like the early 90s. <laughs> cat's almost as old as I am. Um, so I actually discovered I'm not the first person to come up with this idea. This is, this is a cat organ. Um, it is the, I, I, I think it should be called a cat torture device, but... Um, so in the 16th century, a historian described seeing like a cat organ being played, wait for it, being played by a bear when King Philip II rode into Brussels. So sounds <laughs> legit, right? <laughs> so um, there's like a psychiatrist who was like, hey, there could be some medical potential to this cat organ thing because like it's the only thing crazy enough to get like crazy people to pay attention. And I was, well... <laughs> That's one way to put it. Um, but it was likely just a hypothetical instrument um, until now. So I, I was ready. Let's, let's do this, right? I know, it's so cute. <laughs> so, so I had some big challenges building Meowifier. I knew that I was going to be facing some, some problems. So I, but the thing I had going for me was I had momentum. I had this idea. I was excited about it. Um, so I decided to go ahead and start building before I had like really done any research, <laughs> like how am I going to do this? What's the solution? Um, the thing I did have going for me was that I had read Pooter, Practical Object Oriented Design Patterns in Ruby, um, one of the best Ruby books of all time, I think, uh, highly recommend it. If you have not, for some reason in this room, if you've not read it, please read it. So thanks to Sandy, uh, I knew that I need to make my classes pretty stupid, dumbed down. Um, I also decided, because of uh, some previous work experience um, with legacy, untested legacy code, that this application was going to be 100% test driven. Um, and I was like, yeah, let's do this. I have some standards set in place. I'm going to be able to build this thing. Um, so I knew building Meowfire, I was going to have three big challenges. So one, finding a way to obtain the notes of only the melody from a song's audio file. Two, correcting the meow length to match the length of the note in the melody. And three, creating a multi-octave library of meows. So let's get started. The melody. So it's pretty easy for a human, especially one with any musical training, to pick up the song, the melody of a song. So I'm going to take a, a sip here because I'm going to be singing poorly in a bit. Mm. Yes, that's alcohol. <laughs> so. The melody is the principal part of the song. So every, pretty much every song you hear on the radio or TV is polyphonic, which just means that there's more than one note going on at a time. But if you were listening to Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, the melody would be the part that Freddie Mercury is singing. So, you know, mama just killed a man, or the I see a little silhouette of a man's town, you know, the whole thing. So those are the melodies. So if you were to include the harmonies and the bass parts and all the extra extra musical instruments in that, um, you wouldn't necessarily like recognize the resulting song because it would kind of all sound jumbled together. So I didn't want the bass line or the harmony muddying things up. So what did I do? Well, computers are pretty unintelligent, right? So somebody has to write an algorithm so that a computer is able to extract the melody um, of a song and you're thinking, oh, did you write an algorithm? No. 
I did not write an alg algorithm. I did not even try to, yet at least. Uh, I did what every good programmer does, and I searched for something easier and already existing, and I found a tool. Um, so I didn't have to write it from scratch, but um, the first try, it was, uh, it was interesting. Yeah, a little weird. So the first tool I tried was called Sonic API, and it offers professional grade audio technology with high class, world class algorithms. They're like high quality world class algorithms. And uh, so I was like, well, I'll give this a shot. It's uh, free for the first, you know, so, so many like gigs of whatever. So this is kind of what it looks like. So I have a simple song parser class. And inside this class, I have a parse method. So all I need to do is pass the proper params through an HTTP call and the song file and my key, with the song file and my key, and it's just supposed to extract the melody for me. So the response that I get back from this API looks, so it's gonna look messy. <laughs> it's a little something like this. It's very long. I don't expect you to see all that. Uh, imagine this, but hundreds and hundreds of lines long. Um, this happens to be the first few notes of the Game of Thrones theme song, so we're gonna take a closer look and see what these look like. Okay, so there's four pieces of data in each collection. So the MIDI pitch maps to the pitch of a note. So um, MIDI is, uh, anybody here not familiar with MIDI? It's like musical, musical, instrumental, digital interface, something like that? That sounds about right. Uh, I think I have it later on, we'll, we'll get back to that. But um, so it's a standardized thing that uh, uh, electronic instruments use so that everybody, every instrument, electronic, like electronic instruments playing the same note, uh, standard notes. So um, what we have to do is, so this MIDI pitch is 35.99348, so what I need to do before I can map it is I need to round it up or down to the closest whole number. So this MIDI pitch would be rounded up to 36. Let's see what that gets us. So here's a, oh I was right, MIDI musical instrument digital interface. Um, so the 36 maps to the C that is two C's down from middle C. If you're an, a musician, you'll understand. I'm gonna show you in a second here. Um, this is, I, I'm a pianist, so this is what it looks like on the piano and uh, helps me visualize a note when I look at it on the keyboard, so maybe this will help you. So if we wanna play this note, it's way down here. And what I ended up doing is like I said, I'm lucky MIDI is standardized. So I just went ahead and I made these constants in my note converter class. So this comes into play after I've parsed my song. Again, here is MIDI note 36, and then I have it mapped to its corresponding uh, pitch, C2. And now a little time for a butt scratch break. We're, we're a little bit well, almost halfway done, so, you know. You're not scratching your butts. Why did I even put this one in here, you guys? So, so what happens next? Well, so there's that append array with note method. So that method adds the standard pitch to each line in the collection that my HTTP, uh, HTTP request got back. So um, I'll show you here. So it takes this collection and this hash, and it adds another piece of data on the end, the note, C2. So we had this big collection with four pieces per line, and now we have five pieces. And it just think, imagine hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lines of this. So, so what's next? Well, if you're looking at, if you looked at the hash, you could see it might have something to do with like onset time or duration or volume. And you're right, it does have something to do with duration, note length. So I need to correct the meow length to match the length of the note in the melody. And a melody is gonna have notes of varying lengths. So if you think back to Bohemian Rhapsody, Freddie doesn't just hold each note for like half a second each. Some of them are like a quarter of a second or like even a whole second. So it's not, mama just killed a man. It's mama just killed a man. So uh, the problem is I can't have a meow folder containing meow files of every conceivable length. So that would be a bloated monster of a library. So instead, I had to find a tool that can either cut or extend a file to fill the proper amount of time. And uh, if you were here for Will's talk just before mine, you know that uh, there's some good tools out there. And like, like I, I said, I, I do as little work as possible. I found the 
laziest way to do this, which was FFmpeg. So, like, Will was using it. It's, like, been around for almost 20 years, I think. So I'm sure a lot of people in this room have used it many times. So the only problem I came across is that it almost had too many settings. So like <laughs> it took a, quite a bit of Stack Overflow searching, searching to find exactly what I needed. But um, I got it working. And it was pretty, it was, it's actually a pretty really messy method. And I haven't refactored it in about two years. Um, so it's hard to determine what's going on here. But like I said, um, it took a long time. So I was like, I'm done. It works. Let's do this. So let me walk you through it. So we pass in the parsed song. So it was that collection that the API returns to us, and then we append. So we pass this in. And then at this point, I need to tell you that there is a library of meow files living in my application. And we'll talk more in depth about those in a bit. But all you need to know right now is there are approximately 88 short audio files, each with a meow in a different pitch, like the ones you'd find on a piano keyboard. So, this is the part of my code that creates a meow with a correct duration. So, th so this first piece of logic, the if statement, is the part that shortens a meow file, and the else statement lengthens it. So short notes, I'm going to tell you how this works. Short notes were pretty simple. So, and cute. So when the length of the extracted note was shorter than the library file, you make a copy of the library file, and then you trim it using FFmpeg to the correct length. So it looks a little something like this. So the note duration is only 0.48 seconds, and the note to adjust is a whole second long. So all I do is cut it down. Really, really easy to do. So the other part wasn't as easy. It's a bit trickier. <laughs> so there's, there's a, a few ways I could have I gone about it. Uh, I chose the easiest way to begin with. So if the note, the extracted note, was longer than the meow library file, you keep duplicating that meow file until it's longer than the extracted note, and then you combine them to create one audio file, and then you shorten it. So it looks, uh, oh, here's my code. So here's the logic for the long notes. This is actually uh, one of my favorite parts of the program to write, and I'm actually going to completely rewrite it because I thought of a better way to do this. But um, for right now, this is how it works. So you find, uh, so here's the note length, 2.46 seconds. And the file length is only one second, so how am I going to get that? Well, simple math, take the note length divided by the file length, which is 2.46, and then I use the seal a method which returns the smallest integer greater than, the, greater than or equal to the float. So that's three. So what I do is I grab three of the meow files and loop it, and then combine it, and then all I got to do is crop it to the correct length. So that's how, the, that's how it currently works. And I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, man, that's like really big on this screen. Well, here we go. OK, so I don't know. My, my head might be in the way. So all of those files get stored in this array. And the last part is in my song builder class, I combine all the files together and output a new file. So. So hey, that solves the note duration problem. So what's next? Uh, this part is next, <laughs> the meow library. So um, it's a lot of meows. If you haven't noticed, uh, very few cats meow in like the bass, baritone, tenor range. Um, and where do you hire a cat choir to begin with? I don't know. So I had to make my own custom meow library. Um, and it started out very interestingly. Um, this, I was sitting at my piano, literally like playing a note and then trying to sing it into a microphone. Um, the problem is my piano is a little flat, and then I'm always a little bit flat, so it didn't it didn't quite work out how I expected. So I was like, well, I'm going to try this a different way. So my next step was singing into my laptop's microphone. Well, like I had a, one of those like tuner apps on my phone, so I'm like, meow. Yeah, like just, you know, I was like, okay, this is going to get really old. And it's not actually a cat meowing. And I was like, okay. I, I think I got like half an octave's worth of notes like doing that before I realized it wasn't cutting it. So uh, turns out I only recorded five notes before I got bored. <laughs> um, but at this point, I went to uh, my test to see if, just to see if it was working. And I knew there was, I knew of one song that only had five notes in it. And let's see if it. Where's the music? 
Hold on. Let me see if I can. My test passed. But obviously, like, the five notes wasn't cutting it. So I went down that easy road again, back to the internet, um, and I finally found a few octaves. <laughs> I finally found a few octaves of a man meowing, like an auto-tuned man meowing. Yeah. It was on this free sound website called like Free Sound. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll give this a shot. It's more than what I have so far. So here's what my library looks like. I've got like some notes. So a keyboard has 88 notes. If you're thinking that this does not look like 88 notes, you'd be correct. It is actually only about this many notes, 49. So just about four octaves worth. So what was I going to do if an analyzed note fell outside the range of my meow library? Well, instead of actually like making a whole meow library, I was like, I'm just going to write this method that adjusts the octave. So to match what I actually do have in my library. So if a note fell in one of the octaves I didn't have a meow for, I adjusted the octave number. So if the note was F7, I would adjust it to F6, and so on and so, so forth. So, and then another problem with the library I downloaded so each note has a pitch and octave des designation, and so um, any note with a sharp is de designated with, um, with a pitch, and then the hyphen, and then the octave. So you can kind of see like a G dash six dot wave. So that's a G sharp in the sixth octave. So I was like, oh, but I already wrote all my constants out, and they have the actual sharp format in there. So what was I going to do? Well, I created a new note mapping, or a new, uh, a new method to format the notes for me, because I was lazy, instead of changing the files. So I'm like, there's a thread in here, like I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> so that's what that guy sounds like, singing Jingle Bells. That's great. I was like, that, all right. It's not quite what I was hoping for. So like, I took all that time like, adjusting my app to work with that specific library, which was a mistake, because I still wasn't happy with it. So I decided to just bite the bullet and make my own cat meow library. It spans this many notes. I no longer need this formatting no note method, um, because I renamed all of my meows as I created them. And I could get rid of it, and let's, and I can get rid of this uh, set octave modifier method. Oh, this this guy here, because I was like, well, I have all the notes I need, which was great. So now look at all these notes that I have. Those are all meows. So it's the moment you've all been waiting for, almost. So just to remind you, this is what we're going for. Okay. There we go. Okay, you remember that. The Game of Thrones theme song, everybody. <laughs> So um, I don't know if you heard that, <laughs> but it doesn't actually sound like the Game of Thrones theme song. Um, so there was a problem, <laughs> and it started way back in that first step with the melody analyzer. Um, it wasn't actually that great of a melody analyzer. <laughs> Apparently, you have to pay lots of money for a really good melody analyzer. <laughs> but I was like, I don't have that kind of money, so I'm going to try something else. Uh, my second try. So is this, this library called Melodia. And I found this guy. He'd written his, his PhD thesis about melody extraction. I'm like, great, somebody's super smart. He developed a software and also a command line tool, and it was free. And I was like, I was like what the hell? I'll, I'll give this a shot. So um, I signed the release form bef uh, before the university where he did his research would send me the software. 
This is what the release form looks like. I'm not sure they actually read it <laughs> because they actually sent me the software. Um, but hey, I got it. Uh, and this is, it was just like a simple Python command line tool. It ran really fast, like almost too fast. I was like, you know what? I'm okay with that. So I start testing out the command line tool. I have it save the output files directly to my desktop. The difference between this software and the previous uh, tools I was, I was using is that this one returns a MIDI file. So now I needed a new class to translate the MIDI files into. So um, I was like, but I don't want to write a new class until like, I know that this works. So I upload this uh, file it returns to me to a free MIDI analyzer app. And um, yeah. So it turns out melody extraction is really hard. Um, <laughs> this is actually Melodia in action. So you can see like three different types of music. There's jazz, pop, and opera. And it's really good for jazz music, which nobody listens to, and it sucks at pop and opera, which I know everybody here is a huge opera fan. Um, so when it turns out, like, so the blue here is the frequency that the computer estimates the melody to be in these graphs, and the red is the actual melody. So, you know, it, <laughs> it needs a little bit of tweaking. So um, it turns out this actually wasn't going to be worth my time to add to my app. So... At this point, I, I'm decided to stick with Sonic API, the first, the first one, because at least, you know, I got something out of it, and I didn't have to write a new class. But um, I'm just, I'm stuck with this now. Hold on, where'd it go? Yeah, this. It just goes on for five minutes, so we could sit here, but I'm running a little low on time. So, is it perfect? No, it's far from it. Uh, I mean, the good or the bad thing is that I'm not getting paid to do this thing, so, like, I'm going to keep working on it slowly. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that somebody eventually releases a better, cheap, or free melody extraction tool. So, what's next? Well, there's a lot of changes I would love to make. Um, like I said, a better melody analyzer. Um, I would actually, there's no client side yet. Like, this is all a command line tool. I'm like, I'll finish the client side once I actually have it working, you know? So, I was like, what else can I do? Well, I, I was like, I could pivot slightly. Slightly. Um, so, I had this other idea. There's this, you know, Shazam, the song identifier ap application. You guys have heard of that? What if I use a reverse melody analyzer tool like Shazam to figure out which song a user uploads? And then I have my app scrape the internet for a MIDI version of that song and meowify it using my meow library. So I wish I had this already built out, but I just spent the last two months moving. I'm so sorry. Um, so that's one of my next steps. Um, and as a way to say, like, there are other things I'm going to do. I'm going to save some money and some time. So what if I store a song, like, in AWS or something, every time somebody, like, inputs a song? If, it, if somebody inputs the same song, I don't have to reanalyze it. I can just send them back the one that already exists. So just a few little, like, good ideas like that. I think they're good. They could be really bad. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, so, so that's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can find my slides on Speaker Deck. Um, you keep an eye out uh, on Twitter. I'll maybe be releasing Malifier to the public soonish. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in person or on Twitter. My handle is Hobart Dashery. Um, and you can find me at these places. And with that, thank you so much. That is it.